All right, brothers and sisters, I know it's been a while, but thank you for being long suffering with me. And, you know, um, just, just waiting patiently. All right. So, as you know, this is a part of our original uh, lesson. This is not a current event topic, but because we missed last Shabbat, I want to get into this because, boy, wait till you see what this Shabbat brings, most high willing. So, uh, as you know, we were in the lesson with a series called Enduring the Final Afflictions. Um, we were on the lack of mammon. That's where we last left off. The first portion, we went over the videos, the numerous videos that I shared with you all um, from the World Economic Forum and WHO and breaking down the times through mammon, okay? Um, of course, as you know, things continuously change. Um, Therefore, as it says in 2 Timothy chapter 2 and 15, study to show thyself approved. I can always go over lessons, brothers and sisters, but because things are always changing and prophecy is uh, quickly speeding up, make sure that you also are reading and staying knowledgeable so that you aren't taken by surprise when these things continue to occur right with that being said we left off at john the book of john okay john chapter 8 and 23 all right and so it reads, and he said unto them, ye are from beneath, I am from above, ye are of this world, and I am not of this world. Now we understand from the previous lesson, we were talking about man and how people really are, there's two sides to this, okay? There's those who are going to succumb to mammon, there's those who are going to succumb through mammon and, and, and uh, worship anything that mammon will be attached to. And there's those who are going to be completely focused on the kingdom. When we see different scriptures in the Bible, we see things like, let's uh, get it really quickly in Revelation. Okay, when we see things like in Revelation, Revelation, where it's talking about the mark, right? Revelation 13 and 16 says, and he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save, which means except he had the mark, or the name of the beast or the number of his name, okay? Now, when Christ said in Matthew 6 and 24, you cannot serve two masters, only the most high or mammon. He was not just speaking for the time that he was in then. He was also speaking as a sign, not only then, but also here as well, saying, or through the prophecy through John here as well, saying what? Saying that the end of the world, as we know it, the beast system, the satanic system, the system for your soul would be tied into finances, okay? It would be tied in to finances. So brothers and sisters, for all those individuals who used to say, oh, there's going to be a rapture, doesn't exist. 
Okay. I know they're going to use Thessalonians to say it, it does exist, but why? Once again, why would the Bible, why would Christ, why would the prophets tell us to endure until the end? Why would they tell us? Why would there need to be a mark of the beast if all the people who serve the Most High would rise up and go to heaven, right? Because all the people that would be left would serve Satan willingly, right? If everyone just magically floated up to the air who served the Most High, right? But that's not the case. This would be the final tribulation. This is where many souls will, this is what will make or break brothers and sisters. Jew or Gentile, it don't matter what form of life they are. Obviously, we see it says great, both small and great, both rich and poor, both free and bond. So when we're talking about this great reset, when they're talking about in that World Economic Forum, that global summit that they did in Dubai, okay, when they're talking about this cryptocurrency, when they're talking about uh, uh, connecting things to the brain, hackable humans, the money, you know, no longer going through the bank and pay paper notes, what we call bank notes. They're looking here, they're saying we're going to change it. Brothers and sisters, we have very little time until it's changed. Right now, we see inflation all over the world, do we not? We see famines and inflation. Now, really quickly, how many people knew that famine is tied to inflation? When people think of famine, they just think of, oh, there won't be any food. But remember, famine is what? Let's look at this dictionary this term really quick. Famine means an extreme scarcity or shortage of food, also meaning hunger. Let's also check it here. Okay, a general want of provisions sufficient for the inhabitants of a country or besieged place. You can also look at the encyclopedia. It means hunger, to hunger. Okay, so famine means to hunger. It doesn't mean necessarily always a lack of, oh, in the supermarket. It means, brothers and sisters, when gas in, in, in Michigan is $8, when gas in California is $10, they're saying, oh, wait. Now you're you're wondering where I'm spending more at the gas pump, but then at the same time, I can, the food in the grocery store is becoming more expensive, and I can't even purchase the normal things that I used to. Really quickly, just give me. A brief pause, I'm gonna black something out. I wanna share something with you. All right, so as we're talking about famine, how many people saw this coming? Check this article out, shrinkflation. So we're not dealing with inflation only. 
we're dealing with shrinkflation. What is shrinkflation? Shrink, shrinkflation accelerates globally. This is globally, not just in Babylon, but globally as manufacturers quietly shrink package sizes. So you're going to pay more money for smaller quantities of food. Uh-oh, Houston, we have a problem. Houston, we have a problem. So you may feel like you're getting, uh, let, let, let's say, you know, uh, what was the person? Uh, I saw eggs, right? The eggs are shrinking. The potatoes are shrinking. Now, they're instead of giving the big potatoes, they're going to start giving the smaller potatoes. Okay? Instead of getting it, it uh, you know, so sometimes if you go to a whole food or retailer, you may get 50 pounds of rice for 60 bucks, sometimes 40 bucks, right? That's 50 pounds. So now imagine through shrinkflation, that 50 pounds of rice coming down to 30, 35, and you still having to pay for the same price as the 50 pound. This is famine. This is also severely impacting what? Famine. Okay. Famine and mammon go together. This is one of the reasons why I put these together in this lesson, because they're going to go together. Okay. And even, even I, I debated when I made this lesson originally, what should I put first? Because yes, inflation is going to affect the scarcity of food but at the same time both is one at hand in hand right a hand in hand okay so brothers and sisters tying this all back christ was telling us what the end armageddon the last days would all be intertwined through finances. I don't care how much you saved. I don't care if they are a millionaire. They said small or great, rich or poor. Now, when you see these words, rich or poor, it clearly means it does not matter what investments you have. It doesn't matter if you have five houses. It doesn't matter if you own the Trump Towers. It doesn't matter if you have, you're balling out in New York City and California and having the nicest of things in, in uh, Silicon Valley or Manhattan. It doesn't matter. What matters is this financial system will be intertwined to the soul. How do we know this? That no man might buy or sell except he had the mark. So now they're about to change the whole financial structure of the world. And the only way you can buy and sell, the only way you can have possession, the only way you can receive or even sell things, even as business owners, because a lot of people have become self-sufficient, right? Which is a great thing. But at the same time, that brothers and sisters have to understand that ain't gonna hold either. That's not gonna hold. Wait till I share with you the videos for the Shabbat. That's not going to hold. There's a condition to buying or selling. The condition is worshiping the beast. 
That's it. So for those who've been, this is why when people, people talk to me about finances, I say, use it wisely. But at the same time, understand it's use it or lose it time. Hey, they got the ball rolling and they're not going to stop for you or me. That's it. That's it. Use it or lose it. And you better make sure that while you use it, you get everything you need. Because you heard what Slav said, World Economic Forum creator and Great Reset creator. He said, you will own nothing and be happy. Don't believe me? Go ahead and YouTube it. Go ahead and Google it. He not only said it in his book, but he said it amongst all the world leaders. You will own nothing and be happy. Think about that. How will I own nothing? Because there will be, I mean, you when you think of owning something, you think of money, right? Because I purchase it. I own it, right? I work for it. I get it. I own it. It belongs to me. So that means if you will own nothing, that means there will be a complete collapse of what you could use to get something, right? Which would be money. Which would be money? It tells us, and if anyone ever read the sealed portion, it tells us in the sealed portion and in the Old Testament that Christ's return is intertwined to the economic collapse of the world because he wants everyone to be on an equal playing field when he comes back. So you will not be rich. No one cares about your Tesla. No one will care about your degree. No one will care if you had a six-figure job or if your face was on the internet. No one will care if you went viral. It will not matter. It won't matter. Simple. So, Brothers and sisters, this whole mammon system right now is in red alert. We as a world are crumbling quickly, okay? John chapter 15. John chapter 15, verse 19 through 20 reads, ye were of the world, the world would love his own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. Remember the word that I said unto you, the servant is no greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. And why do I share this? Because as we're moving forward, only the carnal individuals will think that they need money to survive. Now, I'm, I don't mean to bring race into this. Obviously, everyone, all, all civilizations at some point, at some point, they use the barter system. But then we, when sin came in, possession came. And when possession came in, greed came in. And when greed came in, people sought to keep people down while they would stay up. And how do you do that? Finances. You mean to tell me the single mothers and the, the young people who are in college working two, three, and four jobs, they're struggling while this person sits back and does nothing who owns it? No. When that collapse comes, the first shall be last, and the last shall be first. 
It's because all those people, all those CEOs, all these degree holders, they don't have not a work ethic in sight for the kingdom. Uh oh. Uh oh, I'm talking too much, I guess. Although, and I'm not saying some people, some people with degrees will go to the kingdom, of course, because they're going to use it to better the body of Christ and help other brothers and sisters. But they know who I'm talking to. You're talking about those who got the JDs, the lawyers, the judges, the doctors. Yeah, I said the doctors. And I'm going to show y'all next, uh, this Shabbat, I'm going to show you the war that we're in right now from their mouth saying that science is the new God. So when they were saying it on the news, trust the science, trust the science, it's an invocation saying trust our God. Our God is science, put your God aside. And you will serve or you will be put down. Isn't that how everyone felt with the lockdowns? <laughs> and now everyone tipping, uh, tiptoeing around, you know, exemptions and different things, right? Oh, yeah. But understand this, brothers and sisters, as, as Satan continues to push the the vice grips and squeeze and squeeze and squeeze. Remember that we are not of this world. We don't need money to survive. Do you know what you need? You only need one thing and no one can tell me different, love. If I have five people and we all love each other, we're going to make sure that when we see food, we share it with each other because we love each other. When we see shelter, we're going to make sure all five people can get in that shelter because we don't want no one sick. We want everyone sick. When we all get water, everyone's going to get a drop of water. Why would I do that? Not because you have something that I need. It's because I love you. Is because you love me. Love is the source, brothers and sisters, not man. Remember what Christ said, love is the greatest commandment. You can love your brother, you can love your sister, you can love another and lay down your life. There is no greater gift. And so then guess what? If I have five brothers and sisters with me who all love me equally or more than themselves, no one's going to be without because I'm looking out for you, you looking out for me, the next person looking out for you, the next person and so forth and so forth. And so no one is going to be left without. You don't need money. <laughs> And this system that Satan has developed, we need it. But you don't, you don't need money when all this goes down. You need love. You need the love of the most high. You need the love of a brother or sister who loves the most high. You need the love of a brother or sister who wants to see you get to the kingdom just as bad as you want to get to the kingdom. That's what you need. Love is the kingdom's currency. No one could tell me differently. You know why? He said, love is hanged upon all the laws of the prophets. The first fruit of the spirit is love. Everything in scripture is based off of love. Even the plagues of the most high in Egypt is based off of love. You may say, what? The plagues, yes, because plagues was a sign to say, I'm displeased. Most high could snap his fingers and wipe everyone off. But because he loves people and his love drives, his love wants people to be driven by repentance, not greed, he gives 
opportunity day and day and day again until the time where his son will come for thousands upon thousands of angels for vengeance. So love is the source of all things, okay? Remember this, brothers and sisters, true love of the Most High. If ye were of the world, the world will love his own. See that? Even the world is based off of love. If they don't love the Most High, they're going to make it known what they love. They love, you know, MTV awards, the Emmys, you know, uh, they, they love the Oscars and the BTs and the awards. They, they love all the sports and they love the drinking and, you know, the partying and the clubbing and the, the carnivals and the, and the pride parades. Love is built off of everything. Satan has love and so does the most high. It's up to us brothers and sisters to conform to the right love. All of this, the, the entire world is based off of what type of love you conform to. Also again, prove me wrong, <laughs> all right? Didn't it tell us in first John? told us at first John this. Did it not? Told us to love, love, love. Told us all throughout it, love. Love is what brings us closer, see? Even it says in 1 John 2 and 15, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. So therefore, you have a choice to love. Why wouldn't you love the world? Why wouldn't we love the world, brothers and sisters? Do you know why? Matthew 6. Why wouldn't you love the world? Because if you, if you, if you, the reason why we're not supposed to love the world is because we're supposed to be what? Matthew 6 and 33, but seek ye first the kingdom of God. So if you're seeking the most high's kingdom, you wouldn't love anything here. Simple. Simple. Okay. John chapter 17, verse 13 through 21. Get this over here. John chapter 17, verse 13 through 21 reads, and now come I to thee and these things I speak in the world that they might have joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them thy word in the world hath hated them because they are not of the world even as I am not of the world. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. So watch this. Christ says in verse 14, I have given them thy word, and the world hath hated them. So the world hates us because Christ gave us what? Thy word. What is thy word? 
thy word is the truth. It's because we have the truth. Therefore, when people say, oh, who do you think you are? You think you're better than me? Uh, when they say that, understand that Christ said they would hate you because I have given them thy word, right? I have given them thy word. So they will say, what do you think? You're better than me? Oh, well, I think you're just off because, you know, that's not what I believe. That's not what I was taught. My pastor, my minister, my priest, evangelist, bishop, they didn't teach me that. I've been going to Bible study for 20 plus years. I have this certificate and that certificate. I've been to this church uh, retreat because I have given them thy word and the world have hated them because they are not of the world. So you hate me, you hate us because we don't need to go to a theology school to be indoctrinated with a bunch of junk. We get our clear source from Christ and the Holy Spirit. Hmm. Okay. Moving forward. Verse 18. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. So understand that Christ understood his role and understand if we are going through tough things that Christ also sent us into the world, which means this was never our home to begin with, right? Because when you're sending someone there, when you're sending someone to a place, that means they don't belong there. That means they're not from there. They weren't originally there, right? And for their sakes, I sanctify myself that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. Now, how deep is that. So not only does Christ have love and power over those whom he sent, but notice the people that he sent, he blesses the people who listen to them. Do you not see that? He says, neither I Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which believe on me through their word. So that means Christ has given the authority to the people he sent for their words to be considered as what? Power and weight and judgment. He said, for them also which shall believe on me through their word. He didn't say the prophet's word. He didn't say your pastor's word. And when I'm saying prophet, I'm referring to the false prophets out here. He didn't say uh, the Jezebel's word. He said these individuals who he sent, if you listen to them, and believe in Christ through what they tell you, he's also going to have you protected as well. Wow. <laughs> wow. And, and this, so many people in the Western world, or Babylon, as we would know in Europe, it's more, more uh, highly developed uh, countries, they would say that, oh, so we can sit in a church and do, be good. This is for the individuals 
who go out around the world and who go and share with other individuals or who make lessons and do things for people so others can have access to it. And so if they're studying to show themselves approved, according to 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, and then they're believing in what we are teaching, then Christ is already, already going to have protection through prayer for these individuals who are listening. Because what? Remember, he said, pray for laborers. Right? One person sows the seed, another person waters. So it's all about listening to who is teaching you. And today, in this world we live in, brothers and sisters, my hat goes to you. If you are a humble individual who can just shut up and listen. And yes, I said shut up and listen because everyone isn't supposed to be teaching. No. Most people are supposed to be listening. What's the point of congregations if everyone's going to teach? Right? What's the point of a church if everyone feels like they have the right answer? No one cares about the congregants' opinions because you're going there to hear what the pastor has to say. <laughs> but we have, uh, in this world, got so high-minded and given everyone an opinion like their opinions matter, which uh, I know this may sound tough, but it doesn't really matter because why would God put a Moses, why would God have his son come down why would God have Joshua over people? Why would God have uh, 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 Abraham and Isaac and Bethelzek and Noah if everyone's opinions matter? No, opinions don't matter. The, the teachings matter of the Most High who through who Christ sent. And then you listen and are saved and sanctified for believing on Christ through whom he sent you of those people to teach. Right? Hey. That, that, that's just real. Oh, I, as a minister, that's one of my pet peeves. I understand brothers and sisters have questions. I understand people reading. But unless you are a minister, Unless you are a teacher through the order of Christ, through the order of the body of Christ, you shouldn't be teaching nobody. For example, everyone on, on, on social media wants to find some truth and then start posting and teaching. But teachers come from what? the body of Christ. So in order to be a teacher, you must be a part of a body. Someone had to give you that ability, right? Which means now all the people online are false prophets, false teachers, because you're not in a body of Christ. You don't even know the order of Melchizedek. You don't even know the order of Christ and how he ordained these individuals. Hmm. So, so, no, everyone, oh, it's so irksome. And if people put down their pride, they, and shut up and just listen, they could learn. But this also comes with a form of mammon as well. Because you notice how when everyone talks about mammon, everyone knows how to start a business. Everyone knows how to save a few pennies. Everyone knows how to get this coupon and that coupon and this tax break and that tax break. Everyone knows that. <laughs> Man, everyone got an opinion. 
They gonna see. They gonna see. John 17 and 21. I'll, I'll read verse 20. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word, that they all may be one, as thou, as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. And remember, there's no such thing as truth if it doesn't go back to Christ and the Most High. Because it says what? That the world may believe that thou hast sent me. So if the truth isn't going back into how Christ and the Most High and the Holy Spirit are took in creating the world and how Christ is our Savior, then it is not true. This is why what? And and uh, what was it in uh, uh First Timothy was it? First, first, first Timothy. I think it was uh, First Timothy. Right here. Right. Right, let me see. In First Timothy, uh, Second Timothy three and seven, it says, "Ever learning, and never able to come to the knowledge of truth." All these people getting these videos and TikTok videos and YouTube videos, man, they don't even know the key elements of the Bible just from reading the Bible alone. So how can you go to other videos? How can you go to other sites? How can you go to social media? And boy, boy. They knew, they know exactly what they're doing. When I tell you, Satan knows exactly what he's doing. He created this internet. And yes, it is a beautiful thing when it's used for righteousness. But this internet, brothers and sisters, a lot of people are not going to like this. But this internet, the original sin. <gasps> what? Go back to Genesis. <laughs> Go back to Genesis. <laughs> okay. Go back to Genesis. Because in Genesis chapter two and nine, and out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food, the tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Wait a second, what is a tree? A tree is a source for something, is it not? Right? It's a source, right? We are all trees and we are a source of something, right? Which means this computer, this internet is a tree of knowledge of good and evil. Which means Satan would elevate this internet so that if you see one thing, Guess what on YouTube, everything else suggests videos and it would take your imagination somewhere else. Don't you know the smartphones, you could talk about something and your phone be off and then you start scrolling and see the ads in Google because it's the tree of knowledge of good and evil. They created a smart device to listen to you. They created Alexa and Siri and all that so they can understand the algorithms of how you specifically think to make sure that what? If you ever in your life came to the truth, 
they can throw up distractions to make sure that while you're learning, you never are able to come to the knowledge of truth. So they can distract you with prepping, tanning, farming, business, everything that you wanted. And then before you know it, you then stayed up all night, can't even open the blinds of your windows because you thinking they're going to come knock on your door right now when you were supposed to get the word of God first. And understand this, brothers and sisters, if you think I'm wrong, go back to Genesis and look what the Most High offered. He offered what? A tree that was pleasant to the sight and good for food. Satan offered the tree of knowledge of good and evil. So Satan likes to give you everything, even if it's not useful for you to grow. Remember, we talked about, okay, we don't, we don't, we, we're not going to be serving with mammon, right? So what's your credit score in the kingdom? Are you making daily deposits to the kingdom? If you need heaven's credit card, okay, and, and everyone has a bank card, and you need to swipe for an emergency because you really need the most high. Do you have a positive balance or you are insufficient funds? Right. Because learning about evil is not going to give you sufficient funds. It's like I tell people, oh, you know, uh, so many people talk about this flat earth stuff. Okay, I get it. I get it. I get it. Totally do. But is the flat earth knowing that going to get me to the kingdom? It sure as heck won't. So is it a part of God's tree? Or is it a part of evil? What is evil, brothers and sisters? Check this out. What is evil? It says bad, evil, adversity, affliction, displease, calamity, distress, something, grief, harm, heavy, hurtful, favored, ill, mischief, misery, naught. And that's what I'm looking for. How many people know what the word not means? Not means nothing. If it has a value of nothing. Okay, the world's flat. Can you see the world as if it, if it was flat or not? No. <laughs> uh, if the world is flat or a globe or whatever the case is, uh, the world was constructed by the Most High and His Son, which means they're the only two who need who 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 need to see if the world's flat or not. Because I'm not the Creator, I can't place someone or something here. So what's my per what's my reasoning for seeing the blueprint of the Earth when the Earth is getting ready to get destroyed? When I, my job is to get to the kingdom, he said I was sent here from him, not to stay here, but to get other souls to get to the kingdom. So why do I need to worry about the flower? <laughs> Ever learning. Ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of truth. Second Corinthians. We, we really hitting it hard, brothers and sisters, because so much is going on. So much is going on. 
at this point in time. Second Corinthians chapter five, verse nine through 11 reads, wherefore we labor that whether present or absent, we may be accepted of him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, but we are made manifest unto God. And I trust also are made manifest in your conscience. And why did I put this? Because I don't care who out there doesn't like my videos. I don't care who I come across and they don't believe the truth. My job is to try and persuade you that it is terrible. It's terrible to fall into the hands of the Lord before he, when he comes. So you may want to get Jack together because you can sit there and debate me and say, only God can judge me. You're darn right he can judge you and he will. But you notice how the world has taken this so lightly? Oh, you're judging me, don't judge me. Oh, you're judging me. Oh, the whole point of ministers, the whole point of the body of Christ is for exhortation is so that we can we were supposed to be able to correct each other righteously and say what you're doing is wrong i don't care how you feel i don't care if it makes you happy if you say you love the most high if you say you love christ if you say you love the holy spirit if you say you want to get to the kingdom of heaven what you're doing is wrong Let's sit down and make a game plan to change it. That's what we are supposed to be doing. But everyone, oh, you're judging me. Oh, you said you don't like what I'm doing. Well, guess what? Hell is hotter than me saying what you're doing is wrong. Hell is going to feel uncomfortable. Being tortured by the devil is going to feel uncomfortable. So would you prefer to be corrected on earth or corrected with Satan? I'm just going to sit there and let that linger a little bit because we all have to appear. We all have to appear. We all have to appear. Look what it says, to show self. You all have to step up with your chest and hear the judgment of Christ. You don't get to say nothing. He's just gonna tell you what you did. You're saying you trying to, the, the, the time of persuading Christ is while you're alive with your actions, not when you stand in before him on judgment. When you go to a judge, do they, do they want to hear you or are they just looking at your case? <laughs> right? Most of the time, they look at you as like, hey, uh, uh, attorney such and such, get your client and have them shut up. If I put you in contempt. You keep talking and put you in contempt. No one wants to hear you. And even if you don't have a lawyer, they still don't want to hear you. They just want to look at what's given, the evidence, the facts. So if you can't talk in a courtroom and defend yourself for hours with a judge of this world, what make you think you're going to do it with Christ? Be like, oh, stop. Girl, stop. I seen what you was doing. Now you scared? If you've seen in the book of uh, 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 Josephus, I tell you, on judgment, you get dragged if you go to hell. You get dragged in chains and you get beaten like you thought slavery was bad. 
you get beaten with, with those whips and you get hung in hell, burning through your, your neck, all the worms and, and the serpents being eaten in your in your esophagus in your in in your in your body. And though there's no flesh in hell, it goes through your spirit and you feel it like it was the flesh. That's what you want. Oh, we're, we're here to persuade. Us ministers are here to persuade people. Hey, the terror of the Lord. Don't get it twisted. Christ, when he flipped those money changers over, he made a cord of whips and was whipping the people for selling stuff in church. Tells us that in the book of Matthew. So if he was whipping people for selling things in church, you think, you, just imagine when he coming back with those thousands of angels, you think you're going to convince Christ? He's not going to hear a word you or I have to say. You either going to appear as light or you're going to appear as darkness, one or the other. And guess what? For all those, since we're talking about mammon, this is the time to get mentally detached and emotionally detached from mammon. If you are worrying about, oh, I don't have this, or oh, if you're worrying about that right now, I would strongly advise you, brothers and sisters, toughen up. Because I didn't say it. Put away the weak nature. Stop being, stop being uh, uh, what, what the world would call a sissy. Stop being so weak and soft. He may say, oh, you minister, he's so mean to me. He's so mean. But look what it says here in 2 Ezra chapter 14. Verse what 14 says, let go from the mortal thoughts and cast away the burdens of man. I could, you know what? We got to pay bills. I get it. We got to pay debts. I get it. But I could care less. You know why? Because this credit score or me paying a bill on this life, it's not going to matter. <laughs> and that's what Satan had did. He distracted everyone with mammon, a credit score, a house, a job, a degree, clothes, fashion, social media. He distracting everyone with the burdens of man. Yet your mind is your mind is in weak nature. The most I said, put off now the weak nature. Because if you still focus on the burdens of man, you think you're gonna, you think you're gonna endure this without money? Go on now. I'm gonna tell you, you 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 ain't gonna last a uh, 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 24 hours because it's about to get ugly, brothers and sisters. We ain't seen nothing yet. Romans chapter one, verse 18 through 32. And I read, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth and unrighteousness. So yes, a lot of people think that this scripture just applies to sodomites or those who live in this unnatural affection. But first, it's referring to people who hold the truth and unrighteousness. Okay. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has showed it unto them. What did he show you? The truth. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. What? so that you are without excuse. What? So that you are without excuse. So when, and I'm gonna bring this back real quick. 
when we go and go back to Genesis chapter 2, verse 9, and we see that the tree of knowledge of good and evil, the Most High says, yes, there is evil. That's true. Satan creates the evil. However, can a soul on this earth go and sit there and say, I never had the ability to come to the truth or to understand because what? being understood by the things that are made, like the internet, so that they are without excuse. So you don't get no excuse. Because you wanna watch TV. I just wanna take a break from my life. You don't get no excuse. Nobody does. That's when, <laughs> you know, Satan was like, you know what? And remember, Satan creates everything for our downfall. When Satan creates it, it's for our downfall. Because remember, he is called the accuser. So he done made this internet. And for everyone that can use the internet and hasn't used it righteously or used it to seek out the most high truth and his true ministers who do use this platform, guess what? He's like, well, these people have been, been watching Netflix, Hulu, and, and Peacock, and, and all those other things, Tubi and Crackle. They've been watching uh sling tv and all that stuff but they ain't use the computer for righteousness so i got you satan said i got you and the, uh, on the other hand because watch this let's, let's bring it let's bring it into full okay sirach 33 Ecclesiasticus 33, 14 and 15. Good is set against evil and life against death. So the godly, so is the godly against the sinner and the sinner against the godly. So look upon all the works of the most high and there are two and two, one against another. So this computer that you use, that phone that you use, okay? There's one thing against another on it. How you use it is considered good or how you use it is considered evil, flesh against the spirit, right? Spirit against the flesh. Oh boy. Minister Yashab, you're talking too much. I'm almost high, so ready. I may be able, and I know you're still wondering, how is this getting in mammon? If you do this with the internet, what would you do with your own money? <laughs> right? If you can't even Google or YouTube proper things for the most high, would you ever use your money for the most high? Oh, snap. <laughs> Because verse 21, Romans 1, verse 21, because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were they thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. Now, this bothers me, right? And I don't know, I hope they don't take me off of this, but it, 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 it bothers me when like, okay, if I go to a pride parade, right? And I start preaching, you know, them people are gonna beat me, right? They're gonna beat me because they hate God. But why have they done this? Watch it. Check this out, one more.
but why have they done this? Look at this, the Queen James Bible. Why do they do this? If I can't go to your pride parade and preach, why can you change my Bible? Huh? Why can you do that? But I can't say anything against you, but you can go and touch my Bible. You can go and touch God's word. Why? 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 Why can I do this? Oh, it's okay, right? That's okay? The, the, the Queen James Bible? But I can't say nothing against them. But when they did this, you know what they had in mind? They had in mind becoming foolish, becoming vain. And because the truth offended them, because they're soft and weak, they didn't, they chose not to glorify him, not as God, not as the most high. So they decided to create their own Bible, to profess themselves to be wise while becoming fools. And they changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible men and to the birds and forfeited beasts and creepeth things. Uh, isn't changing the Bible changing the glory? Yep, this is exactly what we're talking about. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie, <clears throat> who changed the truth of God into a lie, <gasps> who changed the truth of God into a lie and worship and serve the creature more than the creator who was blessed forever. Amen. For this cause, God gave them up unto vile affections, for even their women did change their the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise, also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lusts one toward another, men with men, working that which is unseemly, receiving in themselves the recompense of their error, which was met. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetous, malicious, full of envy, murder, debate, Deceit, malignity, whispers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding. Huh, yes, God also considers people without understanding the same as Sodom and Gomorrah. Covenant breakers who come in truth and then return out of the truth without natural affection, implicable, unmerciful, always killing people, murderers as well, who knowing the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Now, why would I include this in man? At this moment, all these types of individuals could care less about what's happening. Do you notice how right now the emphasis is on children? Right? I shared this before. And I showed you how 
Christ said they would come after children. Did anyone see that Pizza Hut was promoting a book for drags for children? What was going on? I mean, did anyone see the churches that are allowing drags in, in the churches? I mean, and, and the drags are children? The, and, and you know this, right? The sides are clear as day, serving mammon, Satan, meaning serving themselves. Or Jay-Z, his, his clothing line, and you know, the Aleister Crowley motto, do as thou wilt. All these types of individuals do as thou wilt. Have you noticed if it was just about loving, like let, 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 let's entertain it just for a second, right? So all the LGBT, that community, they talk about, oh, it's just for love, right? If it was for love, wouldn't they care about the children? Since it was just man on man, and woman on woman, right? That has nothing to do with children, right? But wouldn't they love the children and want to protect the children, right? But now there's a conflict of interest. It's a woman's body, right? So let him murder, 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 murder. You know, let's just dump all these, as they say, clump of cells off somewhere. And I'm sitting there every time I hear these things and see these things, I'm like, these people are what? this scripture says, unmerciful. Sodomites are unmerciful. I said it. I don't care about no children because I can't have them. Well, I care about something that you can't create. <laughs> right? That's why they want to what? Go after the children. It's sick. So they're turning everything, and this is a part of the man, because look at this, right? The money is being used to promote and produce propaganda and textbooks and homework and put people in charge who have these unnatural affections. It, it, it's sick, twisted stuff. Now, they can they can pass bills for the anti-LGBT and oh, you're a hateful person and the hate crime bills for the LGBTQ community. Do you mean you can't protect children in schools? <laughs> you can't put money in schooling to keep children safe? You can't do extensive background checks on people who live by schools? You mean to tell me a realtor can sell someone a home by a school and then they can go and shoot up the school. If you want to stop the people with the guns or who's getting guns, but you don't want to do extensive background checks on the people. You know, when I was a teacher in uh, Phoenix, I was teaching at a charter school. And one of the students, he had graduated before I got there. And one of my students, even though they were all trouble, one of the students showed me his Instagram and he said, look at this. And he said, because all the kids were around him, oh, what you gonna do, what you gonna do? And I was like, what do you mean, what you gonna do? Can I see your phone? He's like, yeah. And I said, what's this? What are you, what are you looking at? He said, oh, one guy uh, who graduated, 
he had seven bullets. He just bought a gun and he put our names on each bullet. And so I went and I called the police at my school. The kids were okay with it. They said, oh, why are you calling? You know, I said, this is a concern because he's got not only students, but he's got teachers' names on it too. Mind you, he's a graduated student. Do you know what they did to this kid? They went to his home and gave him a warning. And though he kept making videos about wanting to kill the students and the teacher. That's uh, Tempe police. The finest, yeah. Everyone knows Arizona police there is trash. <laughs> But <laughs> my goodness, good grief. I'm like, but you see, if that would have happened, it would have been all over the news. Oh, stop the guns, stop the guns. But they did nothing. I was in the, in the school hours grilling these police, like, what are you going to do? He's got the names of these kids on um, bullets. This kid just got kicked out of the military. He got kicked out of basic training, came back, put names of bullets on, uh, on uh, the names of kids on the bullets and made numerous threats that he's going to kill them one by one and they did nothing. So this has nothing to do with saving lives. Everyone is using money to destroy it. <laughs> Come on now. How many power plants are going down? How many food production places are going down? How many fertilizer plants are going down? Oh, all of a sudden, your know, baby formula is gone since they won't pass the abortion. Everything is, they're using money for death. Brothers and sisters, I'm telling you, if you, and I'm, I'm saying this for us on the opposite, while they're using money for death, you use it for life. Use your money wise, use your money to read, use your money to, to prepare yourself, maybe a little bit of clothing, a bug out bag, if you have the ability, you use the ability to get you a generator, use your money to get you a generator, use your money to get you a deep freezer. You know, the power, the power outages are, are in the blackouts are occurring, right? They won't use money on that, but they want to use money on abortion and killing children, right? We, we live in a sick world. They, they turning everything, brothers and sisters. They turning everything. And we are here. Civilization as we know it is doomed. It's already doomed. You just make sure, brothers and sisters, you're not a part of the destruction. Amen? Job chapter 21. Job chapter 21, verse 7 through 17. Wherefore do the wicked live, become old, yea, are mighty in power? Their seed is established in their sight with them, and their offspring before their eyes. Their houses are safe from fear, neither is the rod of God upon them. Their bull gendereth, and faileth not, their cow calveth, and casteth not her calf. They send forth their little ones like a flock, and their children dance. They take the timbrel and the harp, and rejoice at the sound of the organ. They spend their days in wealth, and in a moment go down to the grave. Therefore they say unto God, Depart from us, for we desire not the knowledge of thy works. Is that not what everyone who's got themselves together? Say, oh, uh, I'm successful. 
I have a house, I have a car, I have my wife, I have my husband, I have some children. Hey, now I got my same sex partner. I got everything I want. Who needs God? But then usually when as soon as someone in their family died, oh. And then I, I, I've been debating within myself if it's even necessary to even do a lesson on this new age. All spiritual, get your crystals and all. They are a joke too. And these same new age individuals, they're so deceiving because they're coining themselves to be so wise, yet they're so ignorant. What is the way of the Almighty that we should serve him? This is what they say. And what profit should we have if we pray unto him? So what? So so do you notice that for sinners, they always have to receive something to do something? Why can't you just pray and say, I'm grateful. I'm alive. I got legs. I got arms. I got some hair. I got my ears. I got my eyes. I got a nose. I can smell things. I can taste. I got teeth. I got clean water. And if you don't have clean water, I pray you get some. Because some people in different nations or countries may not have access. You know, I was in Djibouti. Mercy, most high, on these people. We're talking bottles of water cost, what was it, uh, like 20,000, 15,000 francs? No, no, but the people always want to serve someone with a benefit. I mean, it's so crazy, right? When you go to a job, the first thing you're asking about, what's the benefits, right? They've taught people to become ungrateful. Why can't you just get a job and say, thank you, God? You knew exactly what I needed. It may have, hey, this may not have been the highest paying job, but thank you, I got something. They said, what profit should we have if we pray unto if we pray unto Lo, their good is not in their hand. The counsel of the wicked is far from me. How often is the candle of the wicked put out? How often cometh their destruction upon them? God distributed sorrows in his anger. Wait, 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 wait. What? God distributed sorrows in his anger. God distributed sorrows. <laughs> Slow it up. Sorrows in his anger. You see that word sorrow? There you go. Sorrow. A rope. An inheritance as measured or a noose of cords, a company as if tied together, a throw, a ruin. A band. Wait, wait, wait. Sorrow means what? Destruction, pain, pangs, and portion. Sorrow, snare. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. when the Most High is uh, upset with you, he's going to let you fall into Satan's trap. Since you don't want to serve him, he's going to let you fall into the trap. Verse 18 reads, they are as stubble before the wind and as chaff that the storm carrieth away. God layeth up his iniquity 
for his children. He rewardeth him and he shall know it. So that means what? The Most High is going to give you some chastisement if you belong to him. Okay? Understand what's happening. Hey, these people, don't be one of these people. Okay, why do I say that? God distributed sorrows in his anger. This is the worst time to get the most high anger. People losing jobs, gas increasing, shrinkflation now, right? This is the worst time to play with God. This is the worst time to get him angry. This is the worst time to be on the wrong side. Let that pride go. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 7 reads, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Now, a lot of people won't listen that this is the end of man. They'll read Forbes, Times Magazine, all these Fortune 500, you know, stock brokers and different things like that. And they're going to say, oh, we're good. We're good. Yeah. You went from a sickness of COVID to vaccinations to chaos all over Russia, Ukraine, Famine with wheat, inflation, gas, children, right? Do you not see that we are moving right along? But guess what? It's all part of the plan. Do you know why? Because if I if if I introduce a plan, right? To say I want you to take this right here. I want you to take this, and most people aren't taking it. You know what? Now I'm going to crack my knuckles and say, we planned for this. Pour on the famine. Pour on the inflation. And then just as things get worse, let's release another one. And when we do, tell them that in order to get anything to in order to buy or sell, you must have what we tell you. That's why I'm telling you use your money wisely, because the next time won't there won't be no exemptions. There won't be no, oh, you have, oh, you, you're a good citizen, or oh, you can buy, you know, uh, uh, fake tests and different things. No, no, you won't get through nothing. It'll be roll up them sleeves in China, pull down one of your pants for one cheek because they was putting it on people's backsides in China and still doing it today. I got videos of them duct taping people's legs together and giving them this. Those videos of China, they would never let me put on you. Ooh, they knocking people's doors down, duct taping people, wrists, ankles, neck and all. I don't care. You got people getting shot in the middle of the street, protecting their children because they taking children. They taking four-year-olds, three-year-olds, five-year-olds. They taking newborns for mothers. You got mothers and families committing suicide over there because they don't want to get their family separated because of this. Oh, we ain't finished. <laughs> we ain't finished yet. Brothers and sisters, fear the most high is the beginning of knowledge. Not how you can get money. Not how you can survive and start your own business. Told you. Fear, loving the most high, is the currency, not mammon, not, 
not paper money, not debit card or credit card money. Loving the most high will what? Allow you to fear. Now, let me show you how fear works, right? If you own a home or an apartment, you fear of missing your payment, don't you? Right? You fear. And because you fear missing that payment, you'll do anything when the payment is due, right? So that you don't get put out of your home or apartment, right? Now let's apply that to the most high. Do you fear the most high like you fear losing your job? Do you fear the most high like you fear losing your house or your apartment? Do you fear the most high like if you miss payments on your car that they would come and repo it? Do you fear the most high that much? Because if you don't, you're lacking. I said it. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sorry. I said it. If you don't fear the most high that much, you, you better start really quickly. And the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Why did I put connections to those worldly things? Because you have the knowledge of how to keep your job, don't you? You have the knowledge of how to pay for your mortgage and your rent and your vehicle, right? your insurance and all those things, right? You have the knowledge to do that, right? So you should, you your darn well should have the knowledge of what it means to be in the standings, good standings of the most high. Simple. If you are not, you are a fool because only fools will not get wisdom and instruction. Come on now. <laughs> All right. Proverbs 17 and 16. And I read, wherefore is there a price in the hand of a fool to get wisdom, seeing he hath no heart to it? I'll read it again. Wherefore is there a price in the hand of a fool to get wisdom, seeing he hath no heart to it? That means people can use money to get things, but if you don't got no heart in it, it's just for nothing. So think of it this way, right? Remember that big old scandal? I think it was the woman from Full House, right? She uh, paid millions of dollars for her child to get a degree, yes? There's a price in the hand of a fool to get wisdom. So she wanted her daughter to get the degree without doing nothing, right? Seeing that there was no heart to it. And do you know how people get caught paying for schooling and different things like that? You got the mother paying millions, but it would have been it, it, it would have looked reasonable or it would have it wouldn't have been so suspicious if her child actually did good in school right but why would you have to pay for school if your child was good at it? <laughs> right so a fool is never going they're always going to use money as their means of excuse to do the hard work, right? Just like, for example, think about it, okay? How many people own a house? I don't own a home, but how many people own a home? Right? And they sit there and scream, oh, I ain't got no fruit and vegetables. But if you have a home and you have a, a backyard with dirt and soil. Why you ain't growing a garden? Why you ain't growing a, a, a community garden in your neighborhood? Right? And have someone watch it and then and, and, and cultivate it. 
so everyone can sell in your community. I ain't doing it. Oh, I know, because everyone wants a piece of the pie, right? Everyone's selfish. Everyone wants something for themselves, right? They want to do, 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 rely, 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 right? Go to the grocery store. Oh, there's a price. Oh, I can purchase this. Have you ever noticed, right? And I can be guilty of this too sometimes, but pay attention when you go to the store. The garlic that's peeled costs more than the garlic that's not. Why is that? Because people are lazy. <laughs> They'll pay more to be lazy than to just take out, what, 20, 10, 15 minutes to peel garlic? Fresher garlic, that is, as well. See? The price in the hand of a fool to get wisdom, there's nothing to it. I don't care. This is where now what's going to happen as inflation and shrinkflation occurs, people are going to buy friendship. People are going to look to befriend wealthy people, people who are well off, better than them. We're talking about, uh, uh, and boy, don't, I mean, just wait until they fully implement the mark. If you are totally involved in money and you are a little weak, soft marshmallow cup who can't live without money, then watch when they implement the Judas system. Hey, remember I took you home from you because I told you you'll owe nothing and be happy, but I'll give it back to you. Tell me where those who refuse to take the mark are. If you love money, you're already a dead man or a dead woman. Simple. Because that's what Judas did. Judas betrayed Christ for a plot of land. What? A plot of land. It's money. Real estate investment, right? Go ahead and read it from the New Testament. Go ahead. Titus. Titus chapter 1, verse 16. And I read, they profess that they know God, but in works they deny him, being abominable and disobedient, and unto every good work reprobate. Now, I'm referring to people who would be your modern day Christians who pretty much live decently, right? And, you know, they come with their Sunday best and they go to work. So they profess to know the most high. How do they profess to know the most high? By gain, by money, by mammon. They say, oh, God is gain. Right? It's not even the truth. Jeremiah. Chapter nine. Jeremiah chapter nine, verse 26 reads, typo, one moment please.
apologies. Jeremiah 9 and 26. Or 9 and 20. We'll start from 23. Thus saith the Lord, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, neither let the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches, but let him that glorieth glorieth in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me. So what? Throw away your glory, your praises. Throw away the riches, throw away your might, throw away your wisdom. That's worldly knowledge, okay? But we should glory and be excited in what? Understanding and knowing the most high. Everyone always talk about networking. I'm sorry, you can't network to get into the kingdom. People used to say, oh, why don't you network? I'm telling you, I used to tell people and I say it to the staff, I don't like networking and I never have done it. Why? Because if I don't talk to you and you know we're not doing the same things, we're not equally yoked, why do I want to use you? Because I don't want to be used, which means I'm not going to put interest in anything that doesn't have any weight to the most high. Simple. I'm not going to sit there and waste your time. Oh, well, I heard such and such told you. It just, those are called Judas's opportunists, you know, those false Samaritans. And I say false Samaritans because not all Samaritans were bad. Okay the opportunist is to understand and know the most high. It says that I am the Lord, which exercise loving kindness. Can you say amen to loving kindness? Can you say amen to loving kindness? Okay, judgment and righteousness in the earth, for in these things I delight, saith the Lord. And for those of you who read the, uh, the books of remembrance, you know why I highlighted loving kindness, all praises to the Most High. Verse 25 reads, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will punish all them which are circumcised with the uncircumcised. So we're all going to get some form of punishment. Don't think that you're down and out and the most high is like, oh, well, he doesn't love you. No, most high loves you, but we all deserve some punishment. We've all sinned. We've all fallen short. Yes, it's only fair. Egypt and Judah and Edom and the children of Ammon and Moab and all that are in the uttermost corners that dwell in the wilderness for all these nations are uncircumcised and all the house of Israel are uncircumcised in the heart. So when we get to this point, everyone in the wilderness will be punished, okay, for their prior sins. Think of it this way. And I'm not going to get into the wilderness. I've done this before. Uh, however, think of it this way. Would you prefer to be punished for a time or an eternity? I'm going to leave it at that. Jeremiah, Jeremiah 4 and 22. And I read, For my people is foolish. They have not known me. They are satis, children, and they have none understanding. They are wise to do evil, but to do good, they have no knowledge. Now, we know the children of Israel. That's my people. All right. Have mercy. I mean, it, it, it sort of is true. Okay. I'm, excuse me. It is all true. <laughs> the Bible is true. Let every man be alive. I'm sorry for my uh, little short fib. It is all true. 
If we are, if our people as Israel are not focused on the most high, the foolish. All right. And now this sodish is what? Silly. Look what it says. It says silly, fool, foolish. Now, how come from every TikTok challenge, it's always every crate challenge, every ice bucket, every this and that, every dance. We can master dancing, but we can't master God's way. You can master got got grills in your mouth and, and, and nice earrings and you can master having waves in your hair and nice beautiful hair nice big looking beard we can even master you know uh, 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 our athletic abilities but we cannot master serving God Why? Why? This tells us that the Most High says the children of Israel are foolish or silly. We like to have fun and goof around all, all the time. And they are wise to do evil. So if we're not foolish, we're silly. And when we are not silly, we're wise to do evil. But do but to do good if they have no knowledge. That means how come I mean and boy, I was just watching uh, I think some news clip or something uh, a week ago. And I said, man, it is so true that we are the people of the Bible because here I am, 30 plus years. And you know what? I too was one of those people who thought, you know, I was good in the sport or two. I thought I could do good. I think every person I know who's a male thought they could do good in basketball or football. And 30 plus years later, we still are stuck on rapping. In basketball now, when I say it, oh, he's a coon, or oh, he don't love his people, or, oh, he, he he racist, or he's white, or whatever. I mean, but then we also, at the same time, right? We as a as as a black and brown community, we also look at white people who say, oh, why can't you guys do anything else, right? But then when our own people who it is supposed to be us to correct one another, are oh, you judging me? Oh, don't tell, oh, you hating on me. You crab in a bucket, man, right? You ain't black. Oh, you just mad you don't got my ability. No. Don't you know uh, sports is no different from slavery? They just want you for your physical ability to make money. Because that's what they did with slaves, right? Oh, I, like, I like this one. This boy looks nice. Look at those cheekbones. Look at his muscle, you know, 8% fat. You know, man, he could think he's fast. He could lift, right? Now, same thing for the women. Do you notice that black women and brown women are not promoted unless their bodies are shown? And and, and, and and let's not talk about Oprah, the pedophile, because she's a pedophile. Don't put her in this. But do you notice either the black and brown women, they're pedophiles, they're gay, Whoopi Goldberg and Queen Latifah and others, Brad and all those, or, or they just showing their bodies all over. And this is what the Most High says. They are wise to do evil. I'm sitting there thinking like, aren't you tired of 
of of of people looking at you. I I know females used to say, I don't know if they still do say, it, but oh, this man looking at me like a piece of meat. Aren't you tired of that? Being uh, invisualized and sexualized, right? But then females can't even confront one another without them wanting to fight each other, right? What is wrong here? What is wrong? It's because we don't serve, our people do not serve the Most High. Therefore, we will never get things done. Look at look at all, look at after the points of slavery, we had so many inventors, right? That came out from slavery, right? So many inventors. And then as soon as they recognized how scholastically intelligent we are, they said, let's give these Negroes some music. And let's give these Negroes some sports. And ever since they gave us sports and music, we've been tap dancing and shucking and jiving away from our given abilities to dance and shake our behinds and shoot and catch a ball. But where are our inventors? Where are carpenters who could build the Wall Streets again? Right? They don't want to do that. Where are the lawyers who are not tied to the Eastern uh, stars and the Masonics, uh, the Masons, so we can have our men and young boys who are falsely and wrongly persecuted, taken and bailed out of jail. Instead of sitting in prison, you'll say, oh, free, free Kodak and, and free this person and free that person. But you got people sitting in Alabama and Oklahoma who's been wrongfully in prison for 60 years and haven't, and, and no one's saying free them is because our know how to do good. Simple. And people, a lot of people say, why are you so tough on Israel? Why are you so tough on the children of Israel? I am Israel. That's true. But shouldn't we be correcting our shouldn't we be correcting our own people? We should. That's why I'm so hard on our people. I'm also so hard on our people because guess what? It says 144 men have been chosen by Christ. That's not a lot of people. It's not a lot. I want to get into the kingdom. And I want others to get into the kingdom. I don't want to see... See, see Satan laughing at us while we're getting tormented in hell. He's like, huh, 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 how you like my prize? No, we have to do better. And, and, and all these things are mammon based, brothers and sisters. All these things are mammon based. Think about it. They're mammon-based. And a lot of Israelites will say, oh, the world runs off of us. Yeah, the world runs. This scripture is telling us, the Most High says the world runs off of our foolishness. They love talking about some, some, some uh, black and brown people dancing and hitting the baseball and shooting the basketball and catching and kicking a, a ball. But when town meetings come, when council meetings come, when PTA meetings come, you can't find not one, right? Because you up there 
what? Going to the sports and recreation so your kid can, can be seen, right? On ESPN or something, give it a break. That's why we're in the condition we are. But hey, I'm not going to say no more. Why? Because they're going to keep doing it. They're going to keep doing it. Simple, 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 simple. I'm speaking to the brothers and sisters who, who was trying to get on the right track. I'm proud of you. I love you. I'm proud of you. I know we all have succumbed to this. We all have. And then, and the aspect, uh, let, me, let, me, let me touch on the females real quick because I did touch on the men. Ladies, well, if you are, you know, if your standards for getting a man or husband are based off of mammon, you're a fool too. Because most of those women in Hollywood and all those women who got money, you ain't seen. Most of them getting cheated on, beat. The men having double families. That's what you base love on is mammon. Oh yeah, we got to do better. Because think of it this way, ladies. If a man, a sinful man, understands that your standards is money, then guess what? That's all he needs to please you, which means he will never have a standard of what you should be, which means they will never be satisfied because money can buy them anything they want. And how many, how often is that? Do we see that? How many times do you hear a female say, no, I don't, I don't, I mean, we're talking about, I'm talking about like, high school, middle school ages where these females and people are starting to date. How many times do you hear them say, well, I'm not going to date because I want to make sure the person that I'm interested in, they have some goals. How many of them stick to it? I want to make sure that we go to college together. I want to make sure that if, if, if we struggle, we struggle together. I want to make sure that they're they're okay with my family and my family's okay with me. I want to make sure that even if our families don't like one another, that we're going to stick side by side. How many times does that happen? Oh, we, we have to do better as a collective, okay? And yes, these are some of the things that we're going to get punished for in the wilderness because of those old things. It's okay, but make sure that they don't remain. Okay? Make sure that they don't remain. And I say this, brothers and sisters, because in the truth, so many people still carry that mindset in the truth, right? Oh, I gotta have the nicest fringes. And, oh, this man is a leader. This is that, you know, I'll be respected. No. You can be respected as a woman without being married. That's honorable in itself, saying that, no, my body is for God, even for a young man. That's honorable as well. You saw what Paul said. It's better to be focused on the most high than it is to another, another person, even though marriage is of the most high, most definitely proper marriage. But you should always make sure that it's what? 200 and 200%. That woman is giving 200%. That man is giving 200%. So many times you hear in relationships, people, one person giving 100, one person giving 50. Hey, the blessings of a family are entirely based on the man and the woman together, okay? For example, with Adam and Eve, Adam didn't enforce the rules 
uh, uh, that harshly or that strictly to Eve, and Eve was placed in a position where she had to apply it. So they both made mistakes for the result of their of, of being hurt in the long run, right? It takes two to be on one accord, brothers and sisters. Okay, and even that's the same as what? As Christ. Christ said, all husbands should love their wife as Christ loves the church, right? The church is the woman, right? It's his, okay? Christ wants that bride, which is the church, to be an exact imitation of him, which means what? The wife should be an exact imitation of the husband, and the husband should be an exact imitation of the wife in more so of a peaceable sense, okay? Moving forward, Proverbs chapter one. Proverbs chapter one, verse 22 to 33. And I read, how long, ye simple ones, will ye love simplicity? And the scorners delight in their scorning, and fools hate knowledge. Turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. I will make known my words unto you, because I have called and ye refused. I have stretched out my hand and no man regarded. But ye have set at naught all my counsel and would not of my reproof. I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear come when you when your fear cometh as desolation and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind, then distress and anguish cometh upon you. Then shall they call upon me but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. For that they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord, they would none of my counsel. They despised all my proof. And when it says here, they would none, it's just referring to they would not pay attention or take heed to any of the Most High's correction, his counsel. Therefore, they shall eat of the fruit of their own way and be filled with their own devices. For the turning away of the simple shall slay them, and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. But whoso hearkeneth unto me shall dwell safely and shall be quiet from fear of evil. And this is tough, okay? So in the beginning, this is the God that people do not know, nor do they want to acknowledge, that if you blatantly just keep on rejecting the Most High and keep on not reading, and keep on not studying. He gonna be like you. Who are you again? <laughs> oh, oh, you're praying now. Well, that's great, but guess what? It's a little too late. You think I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna drop and help you? No. I I, I tell people this all the time. Work hard because guess what? If you live in Babylon, if you live in a highly developed country, Europe, Babylon, if you live in those places, 10 times out of 10, you are not asking for anything but other than to just get by. Maybe a better job or a better home or something of possession. Now let's flip it to Malaysia. 
Let's flip it to India. Let's flip it to Ecuador. Let's flip it to Haiti. Let's flip it to South Africa. Let's flip it to Nigeria. Do you not think those people who live in these very war stricken and impoverished areas, do you not think that they would be praying for Christ's return on earth? So you in Babylon, you in Europe, is the most high going to stop for you because other countries are suffering? Never. He's going to laugh at you. And I tell people this, I feel like they put it in one ear and out the other. Because they say, hey, you in Babylon, hey, <laughs> come on now. You know, you got, you got people in Vietnam, people in Malaysia, the Himalayans. You got people in Iran, Nigeria, Syria. What, you think God gonna answer your prayers and, and get, oh, most I just give me a few more months or give me a year, you know, let me get this business. God's like, <laughs> Get out of here, you fool. He ain't, he ain't about to give you something while other people are dying? That, brothers and sisters, is from Satan. Because all individuals are supposed to be praying that they are accounted worthy for Christ's return. It tells us that in the New Testament. So if you sitting there praying for a business or more money to do something else, shame on you. Shame on you. How about you pray for your brothers and sisters in Christ who's all over the world and ask, instead of you having extra time, give them extra time. How about that? I bet you couldn't do it for a week, let alone a month. I bet you. For most people in Babylon, the self-centered. It's all about me. All about me. Oh my goodness. Uh, I want to do this. I'm trying to save up for Black Friday. I'm I dare you to shut up about a holiday deal or a discount and pray for someone else in another country who ain't got the means of a Black Friday or holiday shopping, that discounts come on. Enough. You are shameful. Shameful. It's shameful. And I tell you how self-centered people are. He's in there, oh, I want to get a new car. I want to get... People walk everywhere. When I was in Africa, people walk everywhere. People catch bajajas. People catch minivans. I mean, they push old women and senior citizens. These transportation. Um, come on. I dare you to pray for other people in another country. Look up on an impoverished country and pray for them for an entire week. Bet you couldn't do it. Pray for brothers and sisters to have more time, to have uh, better finances. I dare you to pray about someone else's finances other than yourself. I, I, I dare you to pray for someone else that they get a better home than you. I dare you. I dare you to pray that instead of the most high blessing you with what you think you deserve, that you ask the most high, instead of giving you that blessing, give it to someone else. I dare you. And let's see how many people will. And if you can't do this, then you know you stuck on mammon. You know it. You know it. But because what? Because people are stuck on mammon, 
Most high is like, no, I'm going to let you be filled with your own devices. I'm going to let the prosperity of fools destroy you. So he's going to let you spend. He's going to let you do whatever you want to do. Because what? You, you can care less. The prosperity of fools. And I'll, I'm going to get this scripture for y'all real quick in the book of Ecclesiastes. The prosperity. <laughs> oh, man. Of fools. Ecclesiastes 27. It says, verse 1, many have sinned for a small matter, and he that seeketh for abundance will turn his eye away. See that? <laughs> when you want something, you're going to justify it and say, oh, God's got me. God knew what I needed. As if Satan didn't take the most uh, Christ and say, look at this kingdom. I'll give you everything you want. Uh-oh. Minister Yeshua, you're being too hard on us. As the nail sticketh fast between the joinings of the stones, so do a sin stick close between buying and selling. How dare you? Buy food for a homeless person. Or drop some food off at a shelter. How dare you? Drop some clothes off at the shelter. You know you you got clothes from a few years ago sitting in the back of your closet or in your dresser. I dare you to give it away. I dare you. You know you're not using it. You know you're not using those shoes. Give them away. But if you can't, with a cheerful face, and a cheerful heart is stuck on them. It's sad. That's the truth, brothers and sisters. It's sad, and that's how the prosperity of fools destroys them. Having so much to the point where you greedy, you're selfish, you're self-centered. It's all about you. Sad, very sad. Second Corinthians 13, chapter 13, verse five through seven. And I read, examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith, prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves, how that Yeshua, Christ, is in you, except ye be reprobates. But I trust that ye shall know that we are not reprobates. Now I pray to God that ye do no evil, not that we should appear approved, but that ye should do that which is honest, though we be as reprobates. So he's saying, if we were, you could show us the way, but just be honest and do us right. Brothers and sisters, this is a powerful scripture right now more than ever. Examining yourself. Examine yourself. So when he said, know ye not your own selves, how that Yeshua Christ is in you, except ye be reprobates. So Christ is also looking for us to examine ourselves. Stop being soft. Stop, stop being brittle, be tough. Stop being so fragile and examine yourself. Brothers and sisters, it's better to examine yourself now and be real with yourself rather than find out that you are not what you think you are, right? Because when this all hits the fan, you don't want to find out that you're not something that you proclaim to be.
and first timothy chapter 6 verse 3 through 8 and i read if any man teach otherwise and consent not to wholesome words even the words of our lord yesha christ and to the doctrine which is according to godliness he is proud knowing nothing but dotting about questions and strifes of words whereof cometh envy strife railings evil surmising perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of truth, supposing that gain is godliness, from such withdraw thyself. But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain that we can carry nothing out. And having food and raiment, let us be there with content. So, you always wanted to know why I don't teach that gain is godliness? Because it's pure evil. And if I teach, or if any pastor or anyone who claims to be under Christ teach that gain is godliness, what? How hard will it be for them to teach you to take the mark of the beast, knowing that taking the mark is going to get you some type of gain? Right? Because in order to gain access to buy or sell, you need the mark. So if you teaching and if your heart is based on Gimme, 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 how can I get, get, get? You've already fallen short. Because brothers and sisters, even in the wilderness, the attitude is not gain, the attitude is give. How can I give another brother or another sister a piece of love from me to them? So they can be encouraged. See, Satan will always copy the Most High. Most High says give, Satan says gain, right? For example, the Most High gave his son, right? For our sins. Satan says, I can give you everything with the condition, right? right? And when I give you something, you will gain even more as long as you give me back all of you, right? But the Most High said, all I want is for you to say sorry for your sins. All I want is for you to love me like I love you. All I want is for you to obey me like you would want your children to obey you. That's what I want. That's what I said. So this is why, brothers and sisters, it's important to examine, understand, in these last days, don't stick to the game. I know it's hard. I know it's hard. But we're all about to go through this together. Don't you want to be coming and gathering amongst people in the near future who have the same mindset? 
Gain is not godliness. Gain is of the devil. But godliness with contentment, being content, being happy for what you have, that's the greatest gain of all. And what's the greatest gain? The kingdom of heaven. What's your bank account like? What's your credit score for the most high? Right? Let us be happy with food and rain because guess what? Other people don't have what you have. Other people don't have what I have. And I'm quite sure there's people who cry themselves to People who cry themselves in the shower saying, why did I have to be born here? Why did I have to be born in this condition? Why is my life like this? Why do Be happy for what you have, brothers and sisters. I know that things are getting tighter financially. Inflation, we're in famine, means the lack of things are being produced. The only thing that's gonna that's gonna be a, a found security as to you not going crazy is to remember and look at the things that God has already done for you and say, I'm content with what you've done. Thank you. With that being said, brothers and sisters, I love you all. And I cannot wait for us to get into the next portion of this lesson on the Shabbat called absence of gold that being said i love you all and have a blessed rest of your day shalom